everyone Amanda here thanks for joining me so I uh, thought I'd just come and do a bit of a craft along it's not really a specific tutorial I am creating a lap book hair okay, style journal um, so yeah I just thought I'd I need to decorate a page I want to make some interactive clips and I thought I'd uh, turn the camera on so so far I've got this cover um and I did follow a part of a tutorial by Ava from Bohemian Crafts. It was on her Patreon. Um, but there was only the very bare basics of the base and then I don't think she's finished hers. <laughs> I've been waiting and waiting for her to upload more and she and she hasn't, so I've I'm just getting on with it myself now. So um so this opens like so. Don't know how I'm gonna do the cover yet opens like so these open okay and then that's going to open so you've got them sections there this is an envelope flip section okay and then each side mirror images each other so there's one there and then those open and there's one there and then here this opens oh, yeah that's it so this has got this that opens i've added this flip page here turn that into a pocket and then that opens and you've got an envelope flip there and that opens and you've got an envelope flip there and then that's the middle so that's where I'm up to okay so I decided where was I working on I was working on this bit here so I've added this flip okay uh, this is vintage genuine vintage from like 1918 um, and then I've got this one which is a printable one that's going to go there but I'm going to add some flips so that's as far as I've got so I've got these little CD wallets I think I'm going to do one flip there and one flip there or I might have them so they just overlap each other for a bit of interest I'm not sure I think if I uh, yeah uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do them like that and then maybe put something across here to keep this one shut. I'm not sure. Anyway, so what I need to do first of all is ink all of this and then make some weight of attaching these CD wallets to the sides. So, I'm using Vintage Photo and I've just ripped this with a decolage ruler because I'm too lazy to measure anything so I hold it whereabouts I want it and then I kind of just rip it right so that's that bit done now I'm going to do some stamping so I'm going to get my tin holes so, let's have a look what we've got uh, I'll do some of that and then I'll get that one out as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't want. It's a male themed journal, Victorian gents. So I'm not being, you know, sexist or anything like that. It's 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 about Victorian gentlemen. So I'm keeping it a uh, kind of a male theme. So there'll be no flowers or butterflies or anything like that. Not that I'm saying that men don't like butterflies. It's just how I'm just designing it. <laughs> it's not it's not deep really <coughs> right so let's have a look I think <coughs> excuse me sorry I'm gonna have this one I really like this one and I really like to do red when I'm doing vintage and I'm gonna be using um some of my own uh journal printables which are available on my coffee uh, link in the description box below. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to be using, um, a, you know, a bit of red. So let me just get myself a piece of scrap. Um, so so that it kind of just links in with my, you know, with my papers that I've designed because I like red with vintage. All right. So we just. I'm just stamping off because I don't want the ink too strong and I'm just very quite randomly or as random as my brain will allow me to just stamping around a little bit uh, 
Just do a bit there. Some of it might get covered up. I don't know yet. That'll do. That'll do. Okay, that's that. And then I'll do some stamping on my... I find these Tim Holtz stamps quite frustrating to store. They don't stick to there. <laughs> so I end up just shoving them in a holder. I'm sure there's a good way of storing them. Um, but it probably costs money and I'm, um, uh, you know, they call me scrimping mummy, not spend all my money mummy. <laughs> right, so, I'm going to have I'm gonna have some red and then I'm going to use some, I think I'll have brown. That's about, uh, that's black. Brown. Right, so let's have a look what we've got here. I'm just going to just really light left. Where's the other one gone? Um, stamp these just a little bit around the edges yeah uh, so let's have a look what we're gonna do uh, let's have a look I quite like we'll have some of this we'll have some of this let me get a block okay um, we'll have this in brown. Something like that. Main shot. <laughs> I'm not too worried if it's, you know, not straight, uh, not perfect. I really don't care. Doesn't matter. Okay. That's that one. Uh, what else are we going to have? Uh, I quite like these numbers here. These little numbers here. And get a smaller block. And that. And that there. And what else? Some red now. Uh, put that back. So look. Let's have. I'll, really like this number here. I use it quite a lot. And put that one there. Like so. And then on this one we'll just have it down here so it's just a little bit different. So have a look what else have I got. Quite like this. go and let's have this oh, this one's nice so I love these little words I know you can get like um, fussy cut kits with words on but I mean and I love fussy cutting but sometimes you just want to just stamp something so it's quick and so these Tim Holtz ones are brilliant. And this one is Field Notes. Alright. So I'm going to have it that way. So they're going to go that way up. Which means that's upside down now. Shall I have it that way instead? Yeah, I think I'll have one going up and one going from the side. Yeah. That's what we'll do. <laughs> I won't really pay attention to the direction of them. Uh, please do pay attention to the direction of your labels. Okay, uh, so let's have a look. That'll do for now, I think. I'll um, add some other, like, bits of ephemera on later. So let me just move my stamps out of the way because, as you can see, they never stick back on properly. I'll have to, maybe they need cleaning. I don't think it matters what brand of um, stamps you buy. They're all, once you've used them quite a bit, start to not stick. And I'm not adding glue sticks to stuff. 
glue stick glue to my stamps. I can't be doing with the ickiness of it all. <laughs> right, so that one's going to go up there and that one's going to go there. I want them crossing over like a say so that they will eventually, I'll think of something and lock each one of them together somehow. I'm not sure how. Let me have a think. Not sure. Right, let's just concentrate on making some strips to adhere them with. Well, let me have a look. What have I got? I want some decent... I'll just use this. I'll use bits of this. So, if I do it about two inches... Maybe? Mm, doesn't need to be that wide. Yeah, we'll do it two inch. Two inches and then... I might not have room for two, for both. Okay, so it's about there. This is how I measure. This is my measuring. And I'll do a little rip and then I know where to cut. Alright. So that I'll do for one. I need one for the other now. I'll save that for something else. Let's have a look what we've got. I need quite a sturdy piece of paper. What's that? That's card. That's no good. But I want to use scraps. I'm not uh, breaking into a full sheet for just that. Let me just see. What have I got? Come on, I need a sturdy piece. Have I got any? Do I have anything sturdy? What's that? Too thin. If you use something that's too thin, you see, then it won't hold up against being used. So, um, what am I going to use? I'll use some of this. No, not that one. I'll use this one. See if we can get two inches out of this. Not quite. I'll just trim it to about there. This trimmer, the blades, the blades are going on this trimmer. Okay, and then I want one the same size as this. I've told myself that I'm going to get myself a guillotine trimmer um, once this blade's done because I'm not madly enamoured with this trimmer and the amount of cutting that I do um, I, I need to move on from ones where you've got to replace the blades I need something that's going to be self sharpening and I know that it'll cost me more but in the long run if you look after it it'll be better right so then because this one's larger it can also double up as a well, they both could double up as a little tuck spot if you so desired. So you just fold them in half. <sighs> right, so we're having one that way. So then it needs to be there. Let me just make sure that that's the right way around. So that needs to be there. Okay, so let me glue that on. I'm crafting in my dressing gown today because it's a wee bit chilly. We've had fantastic weather. Can't complain at all, but it's dropped a, just a right bit chilly. And uh, the slightest temperature drop and I just feel it. But it's going to be back to hot weather next week, so yay. Right, so... Put that on there. Oh my god, I had a bad luck, good luck thing happen yesterday. I'll explain to you in a minute. I'll let me just concentrate on this. Those of you that are uh, maybe the more, I don't 
don't know. I don't expect anybody to have noticed, but you will notice that my engagement ring's missing. I've only got my wedding band on. <laughs> I had a good luck, bad luck thing happen to me yesterday. So let me just get this on so I know I've got them on the right way and then I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> right nightmare. Hold on a minute. There we go. So I don't want to go over there. Yeah, that's fine. So what happened was, um, busily, one of my daughters came to visit and she was sat in my craft room on the spare chair. And I was crafting away and I just caught sight of my hand and I was like, <clears throat> you know one of those moments where your actual stomach hits the floor and I looked at my ring and the stone was missing. Now... I don't have loads of expensive jewellery. I'm not really one for jewellery, but that ring cost a lot of money. So my first thought was, well, it doesn't matter because I'm now going to be getting divorced when my husband finds out that I've lost the stone out of that ring. Um, so as my daughter's like, she's scrabbling on the craft room floor having a look, seeing if she can find this stone, which is, it's a, you know, a, a, a solitaire one, but it's quite a large stone. Um, you know, it's not a, a little tiny one, but I was like, well, you know, I could have lost it anywhere. I've been up in the village and all sorts today. It could be anywhere. So I'd kind of resign myself to, to, to the fact that it were gone forever and that my husband were going to divorce me. And that was just it, really. <laughs> I've put that on the wrong way now. Have I? I have. I've put that on the wrong way. So let me just peel it off. So anyway, I'd resign. I was like, "There's no point looking for it. It's gone." So then, um, come out of my craft room, and for some reason, I just felt the urge to go towards the garage because I thought, "Well, I've been doing washing. Maybe I've caught the ring on when I've been sorting washing." So I walked towards the garage, which is attached to our house, and. Well, lo and behold, it's there, right on the floor in the middle, and I've got dark wood, kind of dark wood flooring, so it stood out an absolute mile. So lucky for me, um, I found it. But talk about, uh, you know, one emotion and then another. I nearly had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so now I need to go and get that um, mended take it back to the jewellers because it was um, made you know it, we didn't buy it as a ring it was made um, so it will go back to the jewellers that made it and they were, can repair it I mean to be fair it's been on my I don't think I've taken it I think I've only taken it off once in how long have I been engaged 18, 19 year so I can't complain you know it's not like uh, <laughs> But talk about uh, frightening. Right, oh no, I've done that. I have. I, I had it on the right side. Oh, I had it on the right side to start with. See, I'm getting distracted because I'm waffling. Um, <laughs> but yeah, nightmare, absolute nightmare. And talk about bad luck. It's meant to be really bad luck if anything happens to like your engagement ring or your wedding ring. It's like, oh, that's it. We we you know, we're going to get a divorce or something. Uh, but then, y yay, lo and behold, um, it was actually there. So, I've put that on the wrong side as well. I wanted that one on that side and that one on that side. Never mind, we're having it this way now. I'm not changing it again. Pay attention and don't be gas bagging when you're making your journals. <laughs> So that's going to go there and that's going to go there and they're going to flip like that. Anyway, story time over. Now, you can either tuck it underneath your paper before you glue it on or you can add it on top of your paper and then you've got an extra little tuck there, uh, which I actually might do that, but this one is quite old paper, so I'm going to tuck that one underneath. I am going to tuck that one underneath. So yeah, it was a bit of a roller coaster. I think I needed so like a bottle of whiskey. By the time I'd, uh, you know, nightmare. So it's uh, safe and secure in a little velvet pouch, tucked away in my bedroom. 
until I can get down to the jewellers to go and get it sorted. I want that further down. Oh, never mind. I wanted it a bit further down, but never mind. I mean, you could have them spaced like that, couldn't you? So that the... Shall I? Yes, I will. And then I can put little tabs on my bed. Right, okay. I I'm not going to have them overlapping. Change my mind. So when I'm doing anything like this, same with my journals, I literally just make it up as I go. I don't always have a plan. I'll do each page and just whatever happens, happens. And that's how I like creating. Yep. So we've got a little tuck there for sure, yeah. So that one's a little tuck, okay, and that one's just plain. This one's going to load from the top and this one's going to load from the side. Okay, so now I've decided what I'm doing. I can glue this down. I hadn't glued it down already because I didn't know if I was going to tuck it, you know, like this one with both of them. I wasn't sure. Um, so there you go. Right, so because it's a large sheet, I've got my favourite glue in this fine tip nozzle uh, bottle, but it, it only lets a little bit out at a time and it takes ages. It, you know, you can take a while just gluing something, although it's economic, it's a bit of a slow way. So I am using some tacky glue here, which is a PVA. And I know I always rant about how I don't like PVA, but it's in my stash, so I'm going to use it, but I won't be buying any more. But this is 120 GSM paper, and it's going on to, um, it's basically like craft file folder. So it shouldn't wrinkle and it shouldn't warp. If it does, I'm going to cry. Okay, but I am a big believer in not wasting. When I've bought something, I won't waste it. And um, I'll get it used up, you know. Let me just get that. Right, right, okay. So then they both flip. So let me just... So it is thick paper, so it should not give any signs of wrinkling. And if any bits are lifted at the corners, I'll go in with my fine tip. Here we go, it's lifted a bit loose, put a bit of glue there. And I've strengthened the spine and the gussets of this, because the actual file folder um, you know, it's probably equivalent to lightweight cardstock, but it's not massively heavyweight. So just to make sure, you know, that the spine and the gussets aren't taking too much strain, because I'm going to fill it with flips and pockets. And, well, I am if I can get this in, in this stupid bottle. Ugh. Honestly, I think I need new glasses. So it's going to be filled with interactive flips, etc. Um, that needs moving over its simple way now. Let me just redefine that and fold it. So on that bit, this bit of paper here folds out. Yeah, that needs snipping. It's going to be in the way. Uh, that folds out and... Um, And I've done it so that there's a pocket there. Okay. Now I've put this paper a little bit too far over so it's interfering with the fold of the page. So I'm just going to gently pull it and just snip it. That's better. And then if there's any unsightly bits, I'll just go in later with some washi tape. In fact, we'll do it now. Uh, where's the washi tape I've been using? Here we go. If I can find the end. There we go. I'll just put a bit, just measure how much I need. And then just cover over where I've just had to adjust that and made a bit of a pig's ear of it. But it's you just make it part of the dance, it's fine. Don't matter. And this is what I love about 
journal making and this kind of interactive journal making because if you make any mistakes it, it just adds to it you know nothing's a problem right so that's that so what we're going to put in there I think I might just add this little photo yeah so I'll just put the things in and I'll go back and ink at a late, you know, later because otherwise. So we've got that. That folds out for writing. That's going to be a pocket. So we want to put something in these. Let's have a look what we've got. Um, I haven't actually made, you know, like made anything yet. Um, oh, I've made these, haven't I? Made these, but they're not going to fit in those. They'll be too heavy. Um, so let's have a look. We'll leave it in there. He's pretty, isn't he? I don't know if that's going to fit. Hold on. If I just fold it. Yeah, let's make him into a journaling card. So. Um, Let's not go all precise, let's just do it. Yeah. So this is one of my digital sheets. I'm going to just make a quick journaling card out of it. And then I do want to use this for the front cover, this particular one. But what I'll do is I'll just print another one out. <laughs> I'll just print another out, it's fine. Right, so I'm going to have that. Right, so if I make a journaling card. Right. It's going to have to go in that pocket there. Okay. So how wide is that? Okay. So about there. Okay. Save that. I might make a tag for the side with that bit. Yeah. So let's just take the bottom off. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I faffing with that? I've got this. Yep. Chop that off. Let's find something to back him on. To make him moss, that's not going to make him sturdy. Could do with some. Here we go. There we go. Will it fit on there? Mm. Yeah, we'll make him fit. We'll make him a bit smaller and then he'll fit. Okay. And we'll just make a really simple journaling card. As I say, it's just a craft along really, it's not really a tutorial or anything. I just thought I would uh, come and have a chit chat, tell you about my, uh, my emotional roller coaster that I had yesterday and uh, <laughs> do a bit of crafting. Right, so I'm going to glue him down and then I'll cut this to size. And sometimes I think it's interesting to show just your process of how you do things, even if you're not doing anything amazing. Um, because then it shows new crafters that it's not rocket science. You just stick stuff till you think they look nice. And that's it. <laughs> that's all there is to it. <laughs> okay. So let's just give him, I'll just do it so it's got a tiny bit of a border like you know photo mat yeah okay we like that let's see if this trimmer's going to play ball trim it that way first you might not want to play ball ah okay it's it's you know tearing up things at the moment it's not being very well behaved at all let me just do that a bit better there we go Right, so I've got myself a little bit of a journaling card going on there. 
So let me just see how far it's going to stick out over the top of my journal because obviously... Okay, just one second. Sorry about that, my phone always uh, seems to magically go off whenever I... I think, I think all of my family's brains are actually wired up to this camera because every time this camera goes off, they ring me. <laughs> right, so when I put him in there, let me show you why I'm making this adjustment. And this is just what you do. So when I put him in there, okay, I like the way it protrudes a little bit, but I'd like to quite see a little bit more of his face. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce this. So I'm just putting it at the side and I'm seeing that that's going to go across the top of his head. Let me just get this. And this may sound really stupid and really fast, but it's things like this that can just end up making something look a bit better so I can lift him up to there and you'd still be able to see his head so then what I want to do is if I get it and if I just put a pencil mark there um, then just trim off the bottom there then he will fit in that pocket and I don't have to think to myself oh I've made that all wrong it doesn't fit it's no good you know and lose my rag with it it's not necessary um, you just keep going until you get the look you want so that should fit in there and you should be able to see you can see his head it's protruding there nicely and I'll add like a tab or a ticket on there or something and that'll be nice right so now we want something here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a template because I know that fits yeah so I know that I want this size so I think I'm going to use this the top part of this so yeah so it's like the advertisement showing yeah that's quite interesting isn't it don't always have to be a picture it can just be you know like this is going to be just the advertisement yeah, so I'm just marking where I want it and then I'm going to oh, use, my, use my trimmer. Use my trimmer. There we go. And just trim off those white bits as I do it one them. Okay, look. And then what I'm going to do is actually let's see, I'm going to use this as well. I think instead of making it into a journal card, I'm going to make it into like a little cluster of just interesting things. Yeah, just bits and bobs. Uh, yeah, that is what I'm going to do. So let's. How am I going to do it? I know what I'll do. I will clip them together. So this is just going to be a collection of interesting bits and bobs. I just need to make sure it doesn't protrude past here. And then you can just pull them out and they're just bits of ephemera to write on. So this is where you can use up your scraps. Uh, put tags in, for example. A little tag in or something like that. But I'm going to use up some of my scraps. So let's have a look what else we've got. I've got a big pile, <laughs> big massive pile of scraps here. I've got a little postcard there as well. Uh, let's have that. Shall we? Shall we? No, because it's covering over that. I tell you what I need. Let me get my ephemera sheet. Let's have a look what we've got. Here we go. I've got an ephemera sheet here, which is part of my kit. Uh, what we've got, that's interesting, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to clip some things together. So, <laughs> let me just move some of this. Let me get my scissors. I like this blue because then it gives me a pop of colour. And don't forget, I can uh, always print another one out. I mean, lucky for me, you know, I've got these images on my, com on my PC, so I could just print out a page full of these if I so desired. 
you know, I can make myself another one, it's no bigger. Uh, but if you've purchased the kit, you know, once you've bought it, you can print it out as many times as you like. Okay. Yep, so that's that, and I quite like this as well with the red. Or is that too much? Mm, I'm going to have it. I can always print another one out. So this is just like a little red. I think it's a tobacco label. Yep. And then I'll probably fussy cut these and use them to decorate the rest of my page as well as whatever I've already got in my stash. Um, and if you're not very good at cutting out, um, don't worry, just have distress ink around it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, I quite like this. I could have cut them out before I went on uh, camera, but you know, that would be far too organised, wouldn't it? Okay. I like to have a chit-chat anyway. I'm not a hit-and-run crafter. <laughs> and then I've got these, which are um, charts to do with engineering from an old engineering book. So they can look nice just dangling off the edge of things. Right, so let's get on with this then. So, because I'm going to do a cluster of things, then I don't need to back that one. What I just need to do is ink everything. Okay, so let me get my uh, ink. And then I'll show you what I mean. You can just have a big cluster of... Uh, random ephemera and scraps of paper to slide in and out of pockets and whatever have you um, for extra writing space you know the person whoever gets this um, can take it out it's interesting to look at and then you can journal on the back so that's that So there you go, if you've not uh, cut something ideal, just put Distress Ink round it, it'll blend it and nobody will, nobody will know, you'll be fine. Okay. I'm just going to squeeze that one up a bit. Make it look a little bit, a bit more, less like brand new. Same with this, I think. I'm going to make it look like it's been folded up in somebody's pocket. There we go. And this one. Just fold one corner over like it. There we go. And then this one here. And then to clip them all together, I think... You could just use a paper clip, you could staple them. Um, you just randomly fold it and then ink where you fold it then. It makes it look old. Let me ever think how I'm going to hold all these together. Let's have a look. So that's going to be the back. Then we'll have that. Okay, and then that one and that one. And this little ticket here. So how are we going to hold all of that ephemera together? And then, of course, whoever gets the journal as well can use the ephemera if they want. And... Um, stick it round and about. I think I'll use a paper clip. Now none of my paper clips are the right colour. None of them. 
And let me find one that's that's a small one. And because I don't have time, well I do have time. Because I'm a bit lazy. We'll change that to being honest, because I'm a little bit lazy. Um I don't I, just the thought of just I don't know why I think the thought of rusting paper clips sounds like too much hard work. Maybe I should have a go. Because it's all you're doing is um getting the zinc coating off and rusting them, but then I just think maybe the rust will go on your page, but then maybe it will add to the look. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right, so I just use alcohol. Alcohol ink. Let me just make sure that it's... It'll do for me. Alright, so... We're going to clip these together now. I'm going to clip them together so that these will show in the window, yeah? So we're going to do it like that. Alright, so there we've got a nice little messy bundle of ephemera and that will just slide in there like so and you can see all of that interesting stuff in the pocket. Alright, so we've got two little flips there. Right, so I'm just going to use some of this and then I will come and do some more in another video. In craft along videos can be quite fun. So let's just rip this. Which bit do I like? Quite like these. Oh yeah, we'll have that there, look. Right, so there, to about there, maybe. Yep, just tink that up. And then, so I will um, very highly likely add a lot more other bits of, you know, just scraps and details with numbers and letters or, you know, ephemera from my kit to do with gentlemen. I've got the, you know, we've got these red uh, tickets, we've got this like black shield, things like that you can just add, add in. So I'll leave that with you for today. I will get cracking and uh, then I'll come back another day and do another page with you. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it uh, gives you some inspiration. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.